In the bustling heart of Silicon Valley, where dreams were as common as the California sunshine, a young man named Nick Woodman dared to dream differently. I wouldn't call it so much a fear as a recognition that um, I think in your personal life and in business, you are your own worst enemy or you are your own greatest supporter. What I mean by that is nobody can help or hurt you as much as you. As it relates to business, my biggest concern is that we as a team don't realize our full potential or uh, even worse, um, neglect it. But that's my biggest concern. Um, and I say a concern, not a fear, because I know if I, I and the rest of the management team and the company at large stay focused on that, then we have nothing to fear. It's a fear, I think, if um, we lose focus and then it catches us out one day. Born on June 24, 1975 in Woodside, California, he was destined to leave an indelible mark on the world of technology and finance. From a young age, Woodman displayed an entrepreneurial spirit that would define his future. His parents, both successful entrepreneurs themselves, instilled in him the value of hard work and perseverance. Nick's childhood was marked by a deep fascination with surfing, a passion that would later inspire his most significant creation. As he grew older, Woodman ventured into the world of business, trying his hand at various ventures. Some failed, but each failure taught him valuable lessons about resilience and determination. In 2002, while on a surfing trip to Australia, the idea for GoPro was born. Frustrated by the lack of suitable cameras to capture his surfing adventures, Woodman envisioned a compact, wearable camera that could withstand extreme conditions. With unwavering determination, he founded GoPro in 2004, revolutionizing the way people captured and shared their experiences. Under Woodman's visionary leadership, GoPro became a global phenomenon, empowering adventurers, athletes, and content creators to capture breathtaking moments. His positive aspect was evident in his ability to inspire creativity and a sense of adventure in millions of people worldwide. GoPro's success not only made Woodman a billionaire, but also a revered figure in the tech industry. However, amidst the accolades and financial success, Woodman's journey was not without its challenges. His management style, often described as intense and demanding, led to internal conflicts within the company. Reports of workplace issues and controversial business decisions cast a shadow over his leadership. This negative aspect of his personality created a dichotomy where his brilliance as an entrepreneur was juxtaposed against his shortcomings as a leader. Yet Woodman's contributions to the world of finance were undeniable. GoPro's initial public offering, IPO, in 2014, was one of the most anticipated events in the financial world. The company's shares soared, making Nick Woodman a billionaire overnight. His success story inspired countless entrepreneurs and investors, shaping the landscape of tech startups and IPOs for years to come. Woodman's financial acumen was not limited to GoPro. He became an active investor, funding promising startups and innovative ventures. His keen eye for disruptive technologies helped several entrepreneurs turn their ideas into successful businesses, further solidifying his legacy in the world of finance. As the years passed, Woodman's journey continued, marked by both triumphs and tribulations. He remained a polarizing figure, admired for his entrepreneurial vision and criticized for his management style. Yet, there was no denying the impact he had on the tech industry and the way people captured and shared their lives. In the annals of business history, Nick Woodman's name would be remembered as a testament to the power of innovation and determination. His story served as a reminder that even in the face of adversity, one person's vision could change the world. And so, the legacy of the GoPro founder lived on, inspiring generations of dreamers and doers to pursue their passions and redefine what was possible in the world of technology and finance. 
We all have interests and passions for a reason. It's your inner voice telling you what you should be doing with your life. If you're not pursuing your interests in life, you're not realizing who you really are. And as a result, you're not going to be as happy as you can be. What does the word entrepreneur mean to you? When somebody can take an idea and make it real. And so that, that an entrepreneur could be a business person, could be an artist, could be a musician, anybody who can have an idea and turn it into reality. And how did you do that? I dedicated myself to it. When I was 22 years old, I promised myself that I would work my tail off until the age of 30 at a minimum to succeed as an entrepreneur. And uh, that was extremely important because I, I had a lot of failure along the way. Right. The first company you started failed. Uh, yeah, actually. And then there was a company that I didn't even start that I failed at. So I really had two failures before I succeeded with GoPro. How do those failures drive you today? Does well, at the time, you? they scared me. Right? And failure isn't easy. It wasn't like I, I thought, oh, cool, I failed. And, and success has taught me that one of the most important things an entrepreneur can have is perseverance, a dedication, a willingness to fail, pick yourself up again, and, and give it another shot. Because if you don't have that, if you don't have that grit, uh, you're going to get run over. Started in 2002. Um, let's talk about that initiation of the dream. How did that start and how did that come about? I'd started a business before that um, I raised four million bucks of other people's money. Mm -hmm. uh, started a web uh, marketing company. Went boom and bust with the first dot com boom and bust. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to make it as an entrepreneur and start another business, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. And so uh, for inspiration, I went surfing and I planned a five-month surf trip around Australia and Indonesia. The inspiration came before I even left. I wanted to capture photos of myself and my friends that I was going on the trip with while we were surfing out in the water. And no camera existed that allowed you to do that. And so I set out to develop this wrist harness that I could put a single-use disposable camera into and surf with it. Um, and it, I didn't even mean it to be a business idea. I just wanted to document my experience on this trip. And as soon as I got it working well, the light bulb went off and I realized, oh my God, there must be so many other surfers in the world that want something like this. So you started with wrist straps, essentially. But how do you go from wrist straps, which are very simple, to hardware and to actually developing a camera? I wanted to use higher quality cameras with my wrist strap to capture higher quality photos. But every camera that I would use with the strap surfing I would break the camera because cameras weren't designed to be used during rigorous activities like surfing and what I ended up doing was I spent two years um, going to trade shows uh, the camera trade shows around the world to look for a camera that was close to what I would want to design after a year and a half about a year I, I found it and uh, got the manufacturer to agree to make the modifications and begin building the cameras for me. I actually did the deal without ever meeting the actual company. It was all email. I had one phone call where we could barely understand each other because of language barrier. Were they Chinese? Here in Shenzhen. I wired my $5,000 for the tool to be, to be um, the mold to be made because it was, it was actually cheaper just to wire five grand than to fly over there, meet them, have a business trip. And I, I just figured, okay, we'll just go for it. And they ended up uh, being legitimate. And we were profitable from day one because it was just me, one employee. We just had no overhead and uh, rolled one good production run into another and slowly scaled it. And the GoPro that, that everybody knows today uh, has been built on $265,000 of capital.